Welcome to the first in a series of presentations on in-situ concrete compressive strength assessment. We will begin by introducing some basic concepts and looking at strength assessment with cores. The aim is to illustrate the results that can be obtained using the different methods defined in the European standard EN 13791. We will also go on to advise on methods for applications not covered by this standard. EN 13791 covers two main applications. The first is to estimate the in situ characteristic compressive strength and also to estimate the strength at specific locations. The second is to assess the compressive strength class when there is doubt about the quality of the concrete supplied. It's very important to understand what is meant by the characteristic compressive strength. The Concrete Society describe it as that level of strength below which a specified proportion of all valid test results is expected to fail. For EN 13791, this is a fifth percentile. That means when I carry out tests all over the test region, I would expect only 5% of them to lie below the characteristic strength. The raw data for this study was kindly made available by LNEC in Lisbon, Portugal. And here we can see the raw data. There are 43 test locations with rebound and ultrasonic pulse velocity measurements. There are also 12 locations where we also have core test data ranging from 18 to 42 megapascals. So now let us begin by looking at the strength assessment with cores. Core test values are universally considered as the reference for strength estimation. Here we can see the result if we calculate the characteristic compressive strength for this set of raw data using all of the core test values available. Two calculations are required. The first uses the mean strength of all the cores and subtracts an amount based on the standard deviation and a constant to give the required safety factor. The second simply uses the lowest core value and adds a margin. The characteristic compressive strength is the lower of these two values. It is interesting to note that in this case it is significantly lower than any of the measured core values. This is not surprising as we have only 12 cores. If we took 100 cores we would only expect 5 of them to be lower than the characteristic strength. Now I'd like you to take note of these two statements which can be found in AN 13791. While coring gives the most reliable measure of in situ compressive strength at a test location, coring is expensive and the holes where the cores were extracted need reinstatement. Coring on its own gives limited information about the structure. Secondly, a regularly spaced NDT survey will show variations over the structure and identify parts of the test region where cores should be taken. This is something we call conditional coring. An NDT survey is typically carried out by dividing the test region into a grid. We then proceed to make an NDT measurement at each cell in the grid. The use of colour coding helps to see the variation in the NDT measurements. The first step is to identify the highest and lowest values to calculate the range. Then if we know how many cores we wish to take, in this case 8, we can calculate the step. We can then use this information to locate the ideal core locations which we can now be confident will cover the whole range of strength variations in the test region. The NDT survey is carried out using either rebound values or ultrasonic pulse velocity. Here you can see the ProSec rebound hammers and two types of instrument for measuring pulse velocity. Since 2021, the standard allows the use of pulse echo equipment for measuring pulse velocity. This method is much less labour intensive and requires access only from a single side, 
I would highly recommend visiting the Screening Eagle Technologies website to find out more information on this technology. Another way in which NDT is used for the core assessment is to check the location of the cores for the presence of steel which would make the test results invalid. EN13791 recommends the use of a cover meter or a ground penetrating radar for this purpose. The cores available in the raw data used for this study were not collected using conditional coring, but as we only require eight cores, we can apply the concepts to select the best locations based on the NDT survey, either with the rebound value or the ultrasonic pulse velocity values. And here we can see the characteristic strength calculation based on the eight cores selected using conditional coring. In this case, the characteristic strength is higher than when we used all of the cores. As we have 12 core locations available and only eight are required for the assessment, we can illustrate what may go wrong if conditional coring is not used. It would be possible purely by chance to choose the eight highest core locations. It would also be possible to choose the eight lowest core locations purely by chance. So in total, we have four cases which we can study. So if we do the calculations, we can clearly see that the selection of core locations has a significant effect on the strength assessment. Selecting core locations at random can lead to abnormally high or low strength assessments. So in all cases, conditional coring is recommended. So to summarize strength assessment with cores, it allows the calculation of the characteristic compressive strength. It does not allow strength assessment at any specific location. An NDT survey is recommended to select the core locations. Core locations should be checked using NDT for the presence of steel to avoid invalid results.